Guys, this is Ben Wheeler, the Mercenary King, here on behalf of Imagine Your Gods to bring a uh, Mystical Magus deck. Uh, Mystical Magus was just released this Friday, I believe, and uh, I'd like to talk about it. Now, uh, this is a hybrid, uh, some Magus cards and Battle Sisters, and of course I have my starter, the Raid 3 Searcher for OTT. This is, uh, you know, simple, 4-runner, pull it back, and uh, kind of last one, top 5 for a Grade 3. For heal, lozenge magus. Uh, because I like cycling back in my triggers, and this deck doesn't require battle sister. Um, even though it requires battle sister grade threes, it does not require battle sister triggers to be in the damage zone, except in a couple cases. Psychic birds, end of soul, get, gain a card. Uh, battle sister ginger, because battle sister um, trigger over. Oracle Guardian Nike. And then this one's going to cause some raised eyebrows. Four stands. Rather than, say, have four, um, I'm sorry, 12 crit triggers, draw is almost useless in OTT. Uh, too much draw, 5k shields, that sort of thing. Uh, these are actually kind of interesting because there's a lot of on hit effects or decent targets for a stand trigger, but at the same time, there's not enough reason to really go for the full, you know, eight stand, however many stand, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, besides that, they're Battle Sister, and that's nice. I actually used them to great effect multiple times, especially for certain combos, which I'll show later during uh, the Grade 3 section. Four Oracle Guardian Geminis. Hit that 18k. Also helps uh, weaker units hit it, and also in an emergency provides an excellent 16k column when you put just two of them, put two of them together. Let's see, there's uh, two milk, 10k boosters. The lower orders are not Battle Sisters more or less because, like I said before, you don't really need Battle Sister Counterblast for the main main winning images. But this is nice because it gives um, 23k with plus, you know, if it's broke ridden, with uh, Magus and uh, Monica. Monaga. Monaka. And that's really necessary because it brings out more than just a 10k shield for a one pass. Because what if you don't get that one? That's terrifying. Uh, it does require four cards in hand, but this is OTT. You will have four cards in hand. Shit. Um, and these three are Tex, Battle Sister Candy. This card is actually causing me a lot of trouble. I don't want to run more than two of these 5k guys. But at the same time, I just can't figure out what to put in this last slot. Um... You know, so, some people have said, uh, I've thought about putting in another Milk, or another one of these two, but it's just not working for me. So I'm going to run these for a while, get myself off to limit, if I'm stuck on uh, Monica, and I want to use her ability, I'll just use her ability, bring me up to limit break, it's on, you know, activation, you know, and I don't, I can do it as many times as I want. So might as well do it here, and if I hit a heal, you know, that's essentially like healing twice. Nice. And, um... This one, Lemonade, oh, great card, came out recently, and what it is is Soul Blast 2 when it comes out to the field, hit the cost, da, da, da. unflip 2 damage. So that's, uh, that's pretty good, pretty good, but I only run one of her, because I don't really need her as often as people might think. My um, Monica, only, even if I use all her abilities, will only require 3 Counter Blasts. I use 1 Counter Blast for this, and maybe I'll use 1 Counter Blast for Royce. So, you know... Uh, not as necessary as, as other things. Um, this guy, Soul Blast 2, draw a card. So, uh, 5k, so I don't run too many of them. Four Perfect Shield, I like Tetra Magus. That's it. <laughs> uh, now on to the Grade 2s. Actually, uh, I use Tetra Magus because my other Perfect Shields are in a, um, deck I wanna I basically got from somebody else and I use it like a trophy. So, you know, I don't want to separate that deck up. Royce. Uh, Oracle Agent Royce. He's good. He is now usually these counter blast one when it hits a Vanguard search out the top five for a grade three aren't aren't always that great. Especially in like Narukami decks where which I believe the uh, team tournament is coming up soon. There's a binary star twin gunner and then 
Narukami, and then I don't remember what the other one is, version of him. And, um, you know, you know, they're not just not that good, because uh, I, don't, I don't even think Narukami has any Persona Blasters. That's not important. Um, he's good because Monika has a Persona Blast. Also, break riding this over this, over itself, is really good. Uh, surprisingly good, even. And that's for reasons I'll talk about later. So you do it, you hit, counterblast one, like I said before, plenty of counterblast because everything's just a counterblast one. Um, you know, you search top five, you thin your deck. Also, due to Monica and Monica's ability, it's sometimes very useful to shuffle your deck. Because you could get like five triggers at the bottom. Six triggers. I've had that happen. It's really bad. And uh, I probably have saved my life by using his ability. In the game, anyway. And then, um, five 10k beaters. With three and two of each. I'm considering running Tom's for this slot. These two right here. But I haven't decided quite yet because Tom is, of course, just an 8k. And I don't want to keep this too undefensive in the early games. Because this, this isn't an early game deck. This is a late game deck. And, um... You know, it just, it just doesn't work right. I've, you know, used wasted stands on early game. and that's, eh, But that's all stand decks, really. And this is, um... You know, and that wouldn't be a bad bad setup. Uh, three 10k beaters and then two toms. You don't want too many of them, of course, because they are 8k. And because they're hard to get. Other things that I'm really not to set... I'm not satisfied yet with my explanation why. Four Battle Sister Macarons. 12k attacker for uh, Battle Sister. At the end of the day, you will be break riding her, um, so she's good. Since you run, since I run uh, Gemini, it also will hit 17k usually or 9k at least, and that's good for at least attacking a rear guard. Besides that, no early game pressure, or at least there is early game pressure in the form of the fact that every single trigger is either a heal or an offensive heal. I'm sorry, offensive trigger. Um, but in the sense of grade 2 rushes. Just, just not there. And honestly, this is more about defense than offense. But these cards are my offensive cards. Um, also, they, I don't really derive any advantage from them or non-advantage from them. So, you know. Alright, so. Uh, break Ride for Oracle Think Tank. Pen, uh, hexagonal Magus. Uh, rides an Oracle Think Tank to look at the top three. Uh, choose one card from among them and put it into your hand. And the rest in the top of the deck in any order. Uh, choose the Vanguard, gets plus 10k. During your turn, if you have four cards or more, this unit gets plus 2k. For a 23k column with milk, 33k, that hits cross rides, thus it is very good. Um, I'm going to cover this right now, I guess. Why don't... Actually, no, I'll cover it in a second. Now, I've won games by just break riding over break riding. What I do is, I look at it, Let's say I put two triggers and a, um, you know, grade three or whatever. I put the grade three in my hand. I have suddenly two stack triggers for a double triggers, triggers for a double trigger. You know, double check uh, that's you know going to mess up an opponent. Um, you know, like what I do is sometimes I go, uh, you know, they go two pass and I go, okay, stand, crit, and then I have a uh, you know a twenty two k this girl. Who's uh, just, you know, raring to shove one of her guns so far up. Anyway, um, you know, and, and that's good. That's really good. Because what you do is use Future Sight. Um, and so now I'm going to bring it br bring it into this deck. Let's say you get three non-triggers. Well, yeah, hopefully you break ride, you broke road her. And use her ability, which is... Uh, by the way, there is a simple kind of blast two battle sisters gets this card gets plus five k, but I never used that, and it never made a difference. Just putting that out there. Choose a card named Monica, and kind of blast one. Um, this card, Monica, of course, it's a persona blast. Look at the top five cards. Choose two. Put um, and then put the rest on the bottom of the deck. You don't have to choose two. But you would be stupid not to. It's a negative one from your hand for a plus two after you use her. Plus, it's a net plus one. Okay. Um, also, let's say like a, a situation where you look at the top three, um, and 
Look at the top three. See me. You look at the top three. You choose, put one in your hand, but what you have is like two grade threes of the top. You don't want to drive check at two grade threes. That is a really, really bad situation. You use her ability, send the t uh, two grade threes to the bottom of the deck. You won't see him again in the turn. At the same time, there is the danger of like having those two grade threes and the other three are triggers. Well, you just choose, choose two triggers, put them into your hand, put the two grade threes in the... Um, remaining trigger into the bottom of the deck. Of course, everything is a 10k shield, so, you know, 20k shield isn't for a no shield, isn't bad. Now, let's uh, ask some questions. Why don't I run Parfait? Parfait is limit break 3 if you have f 4 or more battle sister rear guards, I think. You get to draw a card uh, if it hits. And that's stupid. It's limit break. If it wasn't limit break, it'd be good. It would be genuinely good. But here's the problem. Um, nobody lets stuff hit on Limit Break, and if you're running OTT, you're running 12 crit. Or at least you should be. Uh, so I always assume my opponent's running 12 crit, it's like, I'm not going to let you hit that. Secondly, it's only 14. Sure, that's 21 with a 7k booster, but at the same time, that's not really very impressive. It also has an ability, Counter Blast 2, if you've got 4 or less cards, I think. Um... You get to draw a card, and that just is lackluster to me. Sure, it's an on-call, an on-call is always better, but it's, it's, it's very unimpressive. Very, very unimpressive. Why don't I run uh, Pentagon Magus in this deck? I don't like Pentagon Magus. I feel that her ability isn't, isn't impressive enough for me. Because, uh, quite frankly, she's stopped with a perfect shield. Also, she doesn't generate any hand advantage. She just uh, causes disadvantage for your opponent. I fought a girl, I lost to her, um, and eventually, but, uh, she was playing Pentagon Magus with a, uh, uh, Crescent Magus in the back, and of course she was calling in all that jazz, but as soon as I got a perfect shield, and started getting my perfect shields, it was one of the most unimpressive things you could imagine. It was, um, you know, she had a good deck, she beat me, beat me fair and square. She, uh, broke road, and then put two triggers, and I wasn't paying attention, and I said two pass, and she's like, yeah, I'm like, damn it, damn it. Double damn it. Um, you know, and also the fact that you know what the first... Tr you will know what the first card of the set is, bef I mean, of the uh, drive check is, before you have to put guard down. At least that's how I understand the ruling. Um, and to me, that's very weak. Because part of the strength of the drive check is not knowing what you're going to be drive checking. And your opponent doesn't know either. Of course, what he doesn't know or doesn't know doesn't matter as long as he doesn't have a perfect shield. If cheating and all that jazz is immaterial because all that matters is what's in your deck. If you know that after break riding a pentagon on this, that um, don't use her ability, but I've got a crit crit, who cares if he puts down, you know, a two pass? He's dead. Um, if I had a name for this deck, I'd call it... Um, I call it I call it some uh, like strategy, you know, battle sister strategy or something like that, uh, future strategy, something with strategy in it and divining the future, that sort of thing. Uh, battle seer, how about that? Battle seer, that's that's pretty badass. Um, yeah, so that's the deck. Uh, as you can tell, the deck is geared to help me use pen uh, hexagonal mages and Monica as much of a team as possible with cards like Royce and um, her out as well as you know this starter here um, honestly there uh, most of my game I did play a tournament earlier tonight and most of my games were either lost to double triggers but one of which could have been avoided like I mentioned earlier as well as to um, being great stuck and I'm gonna work on that uh, Honestly, I'm exhausted, um, and uh, that probably paid into it. Also, the fact that this is this was an untested deck before I put in her, what was her name? Her. I put in Crescent Mages for some reason, <coughs> and the problem with that 
is that in a mage's deck, you always know the future, so it doesn't matter whether or not, you know, you know Crescent Mage, so you just say, yeah, a Miracle Kid. Whoop, there's Miracle Kid. All right, plus 3k. And that's not how it really works. Uh, and it works right with Pentagonal Mages, in the sense that it can hit, like, 35k or something stupid. But it's... 25k? Uh, but it's, it's just... It's still a 5k and not a 6k, and that's just losing it for me. Also, um, I sort of hope my techs work out well. If you've got other techs, you know, it, wor it works out. I won't use things like Dark Hat because I rabidly believe in not giving your opponent any advantage. And often just one card is enough to screw you over for the rest of the game. Uh, and I speak from experience. The, um, the deck that, you know, these sleeves come from, you know, the guy used to run like three Dark Hats. And it's like, as soon as I saw them, and I was playing Mega Colony at the time, uh, I'd be like, yay, Dark Cats! <laughs> you know, I get cards, I get cards. Um, you know, and being Mega Colony that has no card advantage, it was a really big step up. The reason why Mega Colony is not getting a second draw trigger is because that se if it, they got a second draw trigger, it increases their hand advantage, which increases their... Um, it just helps them out a lot more than, say, forcing to run. Like, uh, just four. Of course, w War Scythe is getting a 12 crit variant, I can tell you that. Anyway, I got distracted. Uh, this is the Monica Hexagonal Magus deck. I hope you enjoy, and I hope, um, I'm gonna be variating this, but this is the basic, basic premise of it. And I hope you enjoy it. Have a good evening. This has, uh, been the Mercenary King, friend of Imagine Your Goddess, out.